morning. Just saw tired uh, having a bit of a chat about um, range of electric cars. I have two electric cars. I've got a, um, a Kia Soul and a Tesla Model 3. Now the Kia Soul is um, 30 kilowatts. So it's quite a small battery. It's the old, old Kia Soul. Well, you can't get a new one yet, but it's uh, 30 kilowatts. Kia Soul and um, very nice car. It's not affected by winter and bad conditions um, so much as the Tesla is. The Tesla doesn't like it cold, doesn't like the heat room because uh, it's not got a heat pump, which is the efficient way of heating the cabin. And it's got a glass roof, the heat goes out through the roof. So um, the predicted range on the, uh, I've got standard model, is 250 miles, um, which is completely, well, especially in the winter, is absolutely unreal. You're not going to get more than 200 miles in the winter, and that's if you're really careful. And if you um, did that 200 mile range over days, like you did 40 miles one day, 30 miles another day, you could get well, below 150 miles, but doing it in bits and pieces. So really, it's not a bad idea. I don't do this, but it's a bad idea to uh, charge it regularly, like charge it virtually every day. I think Code Test to recommend it. But then you're not supposed to charge it to 100%. So, um, that makes the range even shorter if you take that into account. So really, 200 miles is it. The other problem is, um, I mean, yeah, it's lucky I've got a Tesla because um, if you're going along on a long journey in the UK, well, you really must have a Tesla because um, it's Russian roulette if you've got um, another electric car where you charge up because they don't all work and there's not many of them. And some charging points are three kilowatt, which is absurd. Um, and some are seven kilowatts, which are pretty absurd as well, because um, you'd have to be uh, there for hours, several hours to charge a car up at seven kilowatts, which is uh, not realistic at all. So only fast charges or rapid charges at uh, 50 kilowatts is the only one you want to stop at. And in the UK, they're not that plentiful. Tesla chargers, of course, are wonderful. No messing around with cards or wraps or uh, any rubbish like that. You just plug it in and off you go. Sadly, there's not a massive amount of Tesla superchargers in the UK. And then quite a few were going to open like two years ago and haven't opened yet, which is a bit of a disappointment. Especially the Model 3 is so successful. I can only hope that um, Tesla start building some more. But you can't knock it because other, other companies that are making electric cars haven't got any charging points at all. So they're doing absolutely nothing. Uh, you take your hat off to Tesla, they're actually giving it a go. So any car really, you can drive, any electric car in the UK and drive a long way without any hassle is a Tesla. And even that's got a certain amount of uh, hassle because there's not that many superchargers. So your journey, you may actually have to go offline, off your journey to find the supercharge en route, which is a bit missing the point. I mean, my dream scenario would be a electric charge at every petrol station because petrol stations are built where cars go. So that would be common sense, but that won't be happening. Um, so really you could say, even in the Tesla, but even more so in other electric cars, a 200 mile range, which is more realistic, and that's uh, being a bit careful. 200 miles range in one go is really 100 mile range because uh, you don't want to do your 100 miles, hunt for a charger, uh, and then come home again. So really, you could say the range from your home is 100 miles, 100 mile range in reality if you don't want any hassle at all. Because charging at home is an absolute treat. Much, much nicer than charging at a petrol station. 
and cheaper and cleaner and not smelly and no queuing and it does it while you're asleep. It's wonderful. I can't recommend it more. To fill your car up, fill your electric car up is a dream compared with uh, filling a perpetual diesel car, but only from at home. So now we're down to a 100 mile range, which is a bit of a disappointment. Um, a lot of journalists talk about electric cars and they say, well, this car does 125 miles or 150 mile range. And they say, it doesn't matter because um, not many people do that mileage in one day, which most, most people don't generally don't do that in one day, but then they want the car to do it when they want it. I mean, you don't buy a car to say, oh, I won't use it all the time. Unless you're a two car family, of course. And that's not very uh, eco, is it? Encourage people to have two cars instead of one when one could do the job if it had one vital ingredient. And this is the ingredient which is crucial. And this, this is the ingredient that a lot of journalists say doesn't matter, which is quite strange. Range is everything. The bigger the battery, the better. And there's no argument with this because if you haven't got the infrastructure, and even if you have, you still don't want to go find a strange charger off your route so range is absolutely vital even even just another 10 or 20 miles could be make the car the car you want so to wrap up um the whole point of things are is that um cars have got to get bigger or more efficient they need four or five hundred mile range and not four or five hundred mile range when the wind's in the right direction or you're going downhill or um, Santa Claus is coming or any mythical beast. It's got to be four or five hundred miles regularly. And when they've got that, petrol diesel cars, finished and good riddance. So anyway, that's enough from me. I shall moan again soon. Um, thanks for viewing. I know not many, not many people do view, but uh, if you view, thanks. See you soon. Bye-bye.